with the first pick in the draft. The uh, Indianapolis Colts first choice with the uh, first choice with the uh, first selection with the first pick with the first pick in the 2014 NFL draft in the 2018 NFL draft in the 2020 draft in the 2021 NFL draft Peyton Manning Eli Manning quarterback Mississippi Jamarcus Russell LSU Cam Newton quarterback Auburn Jadavian Clowney, defensive end, South Carolina. Jared Goff, quarterback, California. Kyler Murray, quarterback, Oklahoma. Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. Hey guys, uh, we are back after a little hiatus, if you can call it that. Uh, took some time off, had to regroup. But it's great to be back, Nick. Great to see you, my man. It's been of a minute course, since I've seen you. Uh, a little different setup, I see you. It looks like you're in a garage or something. So yeah, but, I, I still mean, got my same spot. setup yeah. for a yeah for for a small period of time. But uh, hey, man, listen, we, we we got a lot of sports that we haven't talked about in the last month or two. A lot has happened. Currently, as of today, we're recording on Tuesday. What is it? Uh, April 26th. So we've got the NBA playoffs going on. Uh, the NFL draft is just two days away, right? Uh, Major League Baseball finally came to their senses, and they've started their season. There's so much to talk about. We're going to get into the NBA playoffs, specifically the, the, the Nets a little bit later, and their complete uh, kind of chaotic drop-off, right? Going from NBA Finals favorites to now Crazy. out of the playoffs after getting swept. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit later, but you know us, and if you don't, you're going to find out real soon. We love us some football talk, and uh, oh, yeah. because the NFL draft is two days away, we're going to get into that, not necessarily going over every single pick, but going over some of the intriguing storylines, obviously talking about my Cowboys, talking about uh, Nick's Cardinals, there's some drama going on in Arizona land, so we're going to get to that as well, but Nick, where, where do you want to start with this, man? Like, do you want to start with the the, the actual draft? Where, where do you want to go? I'll leave it up to you. I mean, yeah, I think we should probably just, you know, go to uh, maybe discuss what we think about this draft. Uh, I'll give my thoughts on this first. I think that um, this is the strangest draft I've seen in a while. Like, I think, Jared, it's the reason we didn't necessarily – we're not doing our big mock draft show because we just don't – like, there's too much that could go on. There's too many trades that could happen, and – Obviously, we could sit here and give you a mock draft like, you know, a thousand other people are going to do, but it's going to be wrong, right? And it's going to be all oh, flustered and jumbled. We, we may, I, yeah, we may get like three right, maybe. Yeah. It's, just, it's not worth yeah. it. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt myself to seem like that. No. Well, and that, it's like not a lot of game changes. You know, the, the, the quarterback, the, this quarterback draft is a lot worse than it has been in the last couple of years. And obviously those are big, you know, kind of franchise changer guys. You can get all the edge rushers and the offensive tackles that you want, but that's not going to, you know, that's not going to, it's not a sexy pick, right, Jerry? We want to see the Trevor Lawrence's, the Kyler Murray's, the Baker Mayfield's, all these guys going number one, too. And, and I don't know when we're going to see the first quarterback, and we'll talk about that for sure. But, yeah, Jerry, talk about this. What do you think about this draft coming up? Like, is it as strange as I'm thinking of it? That, that it's just a lot of weird name players and, like, all that stuff. It's, it's pretty crazy this year. Well, I think coming off of last year's draft where we had five quarterbacks taken in the first round, right? The quarterback class yeah. was, I don't want to say elite because I think they're still a little unproven. We need to get two, three years down the road to see how good that class will be. But when you have a strong quarterback draft class, that like automatically elevates the entire draft stock. Even if you're not like a diehard football fan, you're probably a little more intrigued to tune in because of the quarterbacks. This year, like no offense, quarterbacks are about average, right? I mean, they, there's a, there's not a consensus on the, on who is the best quarterback. Maybe it's Malik Willis from Liberty. Maybe it's Kenny Pickett from Pittsburgh. Um, you know, you've got Matt Corral. There, there are three or four quarterbacks that could potentially be the first one taken. Now that it's not going to be first overall, but you, you know what I'm saying? So there's just about the, the next franchise quarterback like we saw last year. And so I think this year there's a lot of unknown, which is super intriguing, and it's going to make me want to watch the draft even more so. But, you know, there's, there's uh, some great wide receivers and great depth at other positions, but not at that key quarterback spot 
which most people are going to want to tune in for just like last year. So, yeah, when you say it's kind of a weird draft, I think it's because there's not that elite quarterback talent. Sure. Yeah, no, I they completely agree. And that's, I mean, um, it'll be interesting. And guys, we will pick uh, who we think the, uh, like the first quarterback will be off the, off the board. And, and um, it should be interesting. And, and the, obviously, Jared, the quarterback, we'll get into this a little bit later. The quarterback situation in the NFL is interesting anyways, because there's a lot of quarterbacks that were supposed to get traded and are supposed to be off certain teams. And there's nowhere for them to go, because I think this is literally the best quarterback year maybe ever as far as like starters and, and, and people just being locked up and all that stuff and just storylines. And, and we'll get into that later, but it definitely affects this draft. It's like the best year ever, I guess, for this, this quarterback draft to happen. And I feel bad for some of these guys too, that, you know, are going to get picked and are going to get paid and all that stuff, but, but they might not end up having as big of a future as some of the guys last year, the guys before that, but yeah, Jerry, um, let's get into it. I'm going to let you go first. And the debate. Are we getting Trayvon Walker or are we getting Aiden Hutchinson number one from the Jaguars? Because this has been a back and forth thing. We'll start with number one. These two guys have flip-flopped. It was Hutchinson pretty much since he, you know, he he finished that Ohio State game, you know, in Michigan last year with that big sack. It's essentially mm-hmm. been him until like the last couple of weeks, which always is what happens with the NFL draft. And now Trayvon Walker. Um, from Georgia is being put in the number one slot from a lot of people, or, Hey, maybe we get an Evan Neal or a Ekwanu, a tackle going first. What end of the debate, who's going first. So, you know, let, let, let's put it this way. Uh, when it comes to position of importance, I think we can both agree quarterback is number one, then more than likely left tackle, then your rush end, right. The reason you need a left tackle. And then probably cornerback. I, 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 at least in my opinion, I would put those four positions in that specific order as the most important when it comes to the sport of football. So you look at the Jaguars, right? Last year, they take Trevor Lawrence, easily the best, most accomplished quarterback in the draft. He did not have the best year for his rookie NFL career, but obviously still to be determined, new head coach, all that stuff. So they don't need a quarterback. Check that off. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they re-signed or franchise tagged Cam Robinson, uh, one of their tackles, and then they signed another tackle in free agency. So at least for the short term, they seem to have the tackles, both left and right tackle spots, kind of secure. So to me, I'm going defensive end. And you want to be safe or you want to kind of gamble and be a little risky? I, I Flip a coin. If I'm, I, I would probably be a little more safe because you got the number one overall pick, right? Yeah. Like if, if, if this pick does not hit, it's a, it's one thing to say a bust in the first round. It's a whole nother discussion to say you had a bust of yeah. all the choices in the entire draft, right? So I'm taking Aiden Hutchinson. I think his tape uh, proves everything. Um, obviously what he did at Michigan and, and this past season, especially against Ohio State, um, I think that just kind of solidifies himself as and nothing against you know maybe he's not the the uh greatest talent in the draft as far as athleticism goes but you know that he's going to bring his motor every game right um he's going to give you everything he has he is a great talent as well um so i would take him slightly over trayvon walker who probably has a higher seal thing so if you get the most out of trayvon walker from georgia you know he could become i don't want to say the next aaron donald but he could become like the next face of the NFL type. But if you're Jacksonville, you you need safe picks, right? Like, I think Jacksonville fans are getting a little tired of picking in the top three of the top five in the last, like, 10 NFL drafts. So the best player, uh, you know, be a little bit more safe when it comes to this first overall pick and, and move on. So Aiden Hutchinson with the safe pick. Maybe not as sexy, maybe not as fun, but... You got to do it. Hey, right. So what's funny about this pick, too, is, Jared, it's not only us debating who should go number one. And we're actually going to agree. I, I do agree. It's Aiden Hutchinson. I just think he why has he been the number one pick the whole time? Why not pick him? Right. Why go with a guy that, that you know, was lower on the draft board because he ran a four or five? 
you know, I respect to him and he's going to get picked in top 10, top five, most likely, but go with the safe pick. Not only are we debating it though, uh, we have the fantastic, uh, fantastically run Jacksonville Jaguars organization. Um, the top brass Shad Khan um, and the general manager are arguing who they want to pick number one pick too. So we really, we literally have no <laughs> idea who these guys are going to pick. It's the, the Jaguars don't cease to amaze me every year. Um, it's funny, their professional wrestling company is run better than their their uh, their actual NFL football team at this point. Um, it, it's just, it's ridiculous, and it's a storyline to see. But, um, you know, the best run front office in the NFL is at it again in the Jacksonville Jaguars, uh, not knowing who they're going to pick number one themselves. So, very, very interesting to watch. But, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's Aiden Hutchinson uh, at number one as well. And I, you, what you said about him is exactly what needs to be said about him and, and, and both guys are relatively healthy they're, they you know they're, they're not guys that were injury prone so it, it's a tough pick but i say you go with the safer pick i agree with you on that yeah um, it, the, the fun storyline would be if trayvon walker went one and then if aiden hutchinson got to stay in michigan and play mm-hmm. for detroit right sure yeah, that would be like the the cool storyline all that stuff but likely if i'm a betting man I'm taking Aiden number one to Jacksonville. Trayvon Walker goes number two to. to I'll Detroit. say this: another reason to pick Hutchinson, and obviously this is not taking away from either one of these teams. And both these teams were amazing last year in college football. But how good was literally everybody on Georgia's defense last year? You got to think that kind of helped everybody out. Have uh, you know everybody else out? having their statistics rise and, and people being able to get their sacks and stuff like that. So when you look down this draft board a lot too, there's a lot of Georgia interior defenders. So I would just, again, you go with the guy that was kind of creating it himself. Yes. There was a lot of great defenders on Michigan, but not as much as Georgia. So again, super easy pick here for the Jaguars. Like you, you have, you're going to get a great guy no matter what, but just to give more, um, Merit to Aiden Hutchinson. I think you look at the rosters too for those two college football teams. One's a national champion because of their defense. The other, you know, just a little bit less, just a little bit worse. So let, let, let me flip this around for a second then. All right. We sure. just talked about what the team should do. If you're these players, if you're Trayvon Walker, Aiden Hutchinson, where would you want to go? Right. Like, like Jacksonville has just been a, a shitty run organization. And like I mentioned, <laughs> they've got a top three pick. It seems like for the last 10, 15 years, they just, they, they, they always have a top pick, and then they, they never develop that person. That person never gets to a second contract, and they, they just kind of start over and over and over, right? And then you got Detroit, where, I don't know, it just seems like talent goes to die. Like, well, here's the thing, uh, it, Jared. You, you got to think, Vegas, though. And he retired. Yeah, Barry Sanders. He yeah. retired, right? Like, right? Like, where, if you're a player, where do you want to go? I'll answer. Okay, so now, now this is we, – we go to number two, right? What are the Lions going to do? I, I absolutely 100% think they should go uh, defense and, and realistically edge rusher here. I think this is either Hutchinson or Walker for them. They do technically need a quarterback, right, um, too. So it's kind of like, well, if you're not going to Jacksonville, maybe you end up in Houston, too. So it's a tough question to answer, like, who, 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 where are you going to – yeah, yeah. Houston's interesting. Obviously, Houston's a little better now because they don't have, you know – uh, 22 counts on their roster anymore, but uh, you know, it's just, it, it, they're doing a full rebuild. The lions are a little bit further along. And um, so I would rather play for Detroit realistically, Jared, because obviously like I think the Jaguars, they need to prove that they need to have an organization run correctly. The lions, they have obviously not been very good for a long time, but there were years where they were salt. There were years where they were eight and eight, and nine and seven, and they made the playoffs with Stafford and all that stuff. And I think when they do get their quarterback, they finally kind of will restart that. They haven't had a quarterback, you know. So it's it's one of those things where, for me, I'd rather play in Detroit, especially if you're Hutchinson from Michigan. Um, but they, these guys don't have choice, Jared. They don't have a choice. Jaguars get the first pick. No, they, they don't. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to be fun here and kind of a hundred percent Detroit. The team a hundred percent Detroit control. And and the players, you know, they all the interviews are done, all the tape has been done, the senior bowl's done, the the combine's done, all that stuff. Um, and I'm actually going to disagree with you here. Now, I don't. Okay. I, I do agree that I, I'll give you this. I think Detroit has the best head coach. Like, if I wanted to play any under of the three head coaches of Jacksonville, Detroit, or Houston, I'm picking Detroit. 
right? Um, because of Dan Campbell. Like, that dude, if he can't fire you up, I don't know what's wrong with you. You must be dead. You don't have a pulse. Because that guy will get the most out of every single player in that locker room. And that's a guy that I would want to go to war with. So, from a purely football standpoint, I agree with you. Talking dollar signs, Florida. That's true. In Florida. And Houston and Texas, no state income tax. Yeah. So if you're thinking more than just football, you can do outside of football as far as marketing and branding and all these other things. I'm going to have to go with Jacksonville and or Houston, and ain't no way I'm trying to go to Detroit. <laughs> no, you're right. I actually, I actually was going to bring that up right before we kind of switched to the lower picks. Um, you're right. Detroit sucks. Like, sorry, but like – it's it's one of the most declining cities right. in the United True. States. Like it's and Jacksonville, obviously you have Florida, you know, you're close to Georgia and the Carolinas and all this stuff for the you know, obviously you're not gonna be going partying all that stuff during the season. At least most players aren't. But um, you know, you do have like it's it, Jacksonville's a solid town. And, and they they were they were very um what's the word for it? Conservative in their laws during COVID and all that stuff to that specific city, not only obviously the state itself, but like that city was very giving. They allowed the, you know, the UFC to come in and do a bunch of events. It, it, so um, Jacksonville's really been kind of open for that. So yeah, of, of course I'd rather go to Jacksonville or Houston or the New York's, which are picks after that than Detroit. So you know, poor Detroit. I feel, you know, I feel bad for talking that bad about these fans. You know, the Tigers on the rise a little bit, right? Miguel Cabrera just got his 3,000th hit, right? The Red Wings got a good young grass. The Pistons are horror awful. But again, these teams are kind of, you know, and you got Sunshine Jared Goff as your quarterback. So not the worst one. <laughs> uh, so, Jared, so we both agree I, uh, Lions, Jaguars going edge. Trayvon Walker, Hutchinson going one, two. Both agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 if that doesn't happen, I'm going to be shocked. All right, so the next two teams, well, next three teams really are interesting because you could go a lot of different ways. Um, you have the Texans, Jets, and Giants. That's who's picking here. For me, Jared, all these teams have an interesting quarterback situation where you could argue that you'd go tackle for these picks. Now, obviously, the Giants have the fifth pick, so they have to wait you, you could get Ekwanu and Neil go Houston, Jets, and the Giants don't have a choice, right? Obviously, they could trade up all that stuff. But, you know, the Texans are committed at least for a year to see how Davis Mills does, right? And this team was relatively competitive for how horrible they were roster-wise, and Davis Mills was a part of that. You know, he came in, didn't really care about the Deshaun Watson stuff, all that stuff, and came in and won four games. Impressive. And with the Jets, you have, you know, a young Zach Wilson who they're absolutely committed to for the next couple of years. You could go offensive lineman with them, although their offensive line is better than the Texans. Or you could go edge, wide receiver. It, it, these are interesting picks. So how do you see, you know, these next three picks going? Um, and, and what do you think the smartest move would be for these these two teams? Or these three teams, excuse me. Dude, interesting is an understatement. Oh, yeah. it, right because uh once again these three teams the the three four five picks are picking in the top five for a reason because they sucked last year the houston texans might have the worst talent as far as an nfl team goes out of all the other 31 teams right like even though they're picking third they're not picking first i think jacksonville and detroit have more talent than houston does so if i'm houston just put a blindfold on and just pick a name out of a hat whoever you pick Probably more than likely going to be better than who you currently have at that position right now. So it, it doesn't really matter if you're Houston. You are literally like the, the best player available. That should be Houston's motto for this entire draft. I don't care if they double up on, on, on the, the same position twice. Like whoever is the literal best player on their board, that's who they should take. Forget need, forget anything else. Your roster is so bad and constructed so poorly that y'all need help at almost every single position, including quarterback. Now, I don't think they're going to take quarterback, at least at number three, but just pick your name out of a hat. Um, if I were Houston, go Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati. Now, you've still got uh, 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 Thibodeau out of Oregon, the defensive end, who has, has gotten a lot of buzz. You have the two offensive tackles, and obviously protecting Davis Mills and keeping him upright 
is of the utmost importance in order to see what he can actually do for your franchise as far as a long-term quarterback goes. But something about Sauce Gardner's length, his size, his swag, his kind of uh, whole entire mindset, to me, is like uh, he would he would instantly come in and be the Texans' number one cornerback, right? Um, he didn't allow a touchdown entire career at Cincinnati, and he was basically a lockdown, shutdown corner. And I think he can come into the NFL and by the end of his first year be a shutdown, lockdown corner. So if I'm the Texans, it, it, I think it's tougher than than how I just made it seem because they have so much need, and there are so many different ways they can go: offensive tackle defensive line, corner, anywhere. You can even you can even go Kyle Hamilton, Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame. You can go Garrett Wilson, the wide receiver out of Ohio State, Drake like you know what I mean? Literally anywhere. Like I said, put a blindfold on, pick a name out of a hat. Going to immediately and drastically improve your team. But if I had to pick, I'm taking Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati. You know, I I, I don't hate that pick and that was definitely a, a kind of a top two for me, sorta. I think you either go corner or you don't. Um, and like you said, you could kind of pick for this pick out of a hat and then number 13, which they have as well from the uh, Deshaun Watson um, trade. That's where you could kind of go and, and be more specific and just see who's best on the board. And, you know, if there's a receiver out there, or, uh, you have, you didn't pick a corner, the first pick, all that stuff. Uh, I think for this, uh, this pick talent wise, um, I do agree with you. Gardner could go, but I'd go tackle. Uh, you know, I, I, I've seen what the Cardinals did, you know, my team with uh, with DJ Humphreys. And, and you know, Humphreys is, is, in my opinion, a very, very good offensive lineman. And when he does stay healthy, he's one of the best in the NFL, in my opinion. So he's lasted a couple quarterbacks. And so you want those guys. It doesn't matter if next year they're terrible. If that guy's good in five years, you know, look at Joe Thomas in Cleveland, right? How many years was were they were they bad? You still had that guy just in case you ended up with that top pick. So I'd go lineman here because there are two really solid ones to pick from. Um, I think maybe if the Lions or the Jaguars pick an offensive lineman, for example, then you're only picking from, uh, you know, one guy, maybe you go Gardner. But I think when you have the choice of both, again, it's like just pick Ekwanu or Evan Neal and you're good. So uh, but I got Gardner right behind, but I would go tackle. I would go tackle for sure. And I'm not just disagreeing with you, disagree with you. I, I would pick tackle. Um, you want to see how well Davis Mills really can be. And, and that's more important at this point than picking a guy that will stop a bunch of receivers that, you know, when you're not scoring, <laughs> right. Because their offense is terrible. No, it, it, it's you're, you're, you're totally right. And like, like I said, I, in my tier of most important positions earlier, I put left tackle ahead of, of corner, right? I had corner number four. The Texans do have Laramie Tunsil, who they traded from Miami, and sure. he is their kind of stalwart left tackle right now. Their right tackle is currently Titus Howard, who I don't know who that is. Uh, I guess he was a 2019 first round pick. But so, I, you know, I think you have to look at, okay, is Evan Neal the tackle from Alabama or Aquanu, um, which one, you know, could be a more flex position? Because from what yeah. I've heard, Evan Neal seems to be the guy that can plug and play at either left tackle or right tackle and immediately like be an all pro to whereas a is maybe more of a left tackle specifically, not that he can't play both. So it's, it, it's like I said, close your eyes. Pick a name out of a hat. It don't matter if you're, if you're the Texans, right? It's just, you yeah. need help at almost every single damn position. Well, and then see, so we'll move on to New York, right? The two New York teams. And again, it's, it's teams that, you know, the jets have their quarterback. Like, I, I think we should, we should wait and give, um, oh, yeah, yeah. their QB. Yeah. They, yeah. Give him Zach Wilson, give him a, um, yeah, you know, a chance with Daniel Jones. It's his final chance, right? It, it's absolutely his final chance to prove that he is, can be the guy in the future. And, and you know what? I, I don't, I don't hate the guy. Like I still think he could hold out hope. And one thing with him is that he has not had a very good offensive line, right? The Nate Solder uh, signing and the Will Hernandez and all that stuff, those didn't work in New York. And I, and I always want to give a quarterback a fair chance with a lineman, a la why I picked the Texans that pick a lineman, you know? So I think the Giants really are hoping they can get an Ekwanu or a Neal um, it, 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 because I think they really need it to truly see what Daniel Jones can do. I think that's the most important pick for them. 
And even if if I'm the Giants, like if you can't pick one of those guys, maybe think about trading back and picking one of the other linemen too, and just getting just making sure you can you're not wasting a pick there. Um, you get a Charles Cross, who's you know top ten, top fifteen pick in this draft, or or even you know even go lower than some of the guards. But yeah, I think they absolutely need to pick a lineman here. And if they don't, you know the Giants, the you're just not being smart about it. So for the Jets. You know, I'll, I'll go with them. Um, this is a tough one for me because I don't trust Thibodeau. He's been injury prone. You know, he, he's a he's kind of a local guy for us. It's a orange it's Orange Christian up in L.A. Um, yeah, but but you know, he he played a lot of the Orange County teams. He played while my brother was playing high school football here in Cal- California. We watched him at Oregon. Didn't play that many snaps at Oregon. So like, are you really picking that guy at number four? Right when you're when you're still rebuilding, that's a tough one for me. Um, and then you got receiver, right? Again, their line isn't bad, so I'm gonna go receiver. I, I, I <laughs> like, yeah, I'm like, I, I think that you go uh, with wide receiver. And I'm gonna. Th- this might surprise people. If I'm picking wide receivers, I'm picking Drake London. London, I think he's the best wide receiver in this draft. So I'm going London number number four. You know, it's too bad you can't play with Lincoln Riley at USC next year, Colin Cowherd's favorite football team uh, on earth at this point. Uh, so I think you go, I think you go wide receiver. You can't go wrong with a lot of the wide receivers in this draft. You know, you have Jamison Williams, unfortunately. Uh, um, I think he would have been a higher pick, but he's recovering from, you know, the injury. Uh, I think Drake London is heavily underrated. And then Garrett Wilson, you can't go wrong with him as well. So, um, but a little injury prone. Who wasn't injury prone? Drake London. So I, I, I'll go London. I think he's, the, I think he's the best receiver in the draft and also a safe receiver. He's just a very, very solid NFL player. And, and I would go with him if I'm the Jets. And then, like I said, Giants, absolutely offensive lineman. Absolutely. So I, 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 I listen, um, I'm not going to go receiver for the Jets. I'm going to go offensive line because like you mentioned, I think they need to keep Zach Wilson upright, who was a little banged up last year. And even though they took Elijah Vera Tucker uh, guard in the first round last year, and then the year before that, they took Mekhi Becton, uh, who is now their left tackle. Uh, George Fant is currently their right tackle. So I, because I have not had a tackle go yet, I'm taking Evan Neal from Alabama, plugging him in at the right side. And the last three years, you have first round uh, uh, linemen, you know, to protect Zach Wilson. So but I, I will agree with you though. Drake London is the best wide receiver in this draft. Like, don't don't think about it. Don't hesitate. It's a it's a yes. Drake London, when healthy, is the best dude in this draft. Garrett Wilson is a freak. He's a stud. He's going to be great. Um, I think he will go in the top ten. James uh, Jameson Williams, I think, will still go top fifteen. If you know he tore his ACL, you can make a case for Chris Olave, the smoothest, in my opinion, receiver in in the in the draft. Um, but Drake London is that dude. And he would be like, like if you are Zach Wilson, I don't think you can go wrong because you're either going to get a, an elite receiver that you can throw the ball up to in any situation, or you're going to get another offensive lineman to help keep you upright. So if you're Zach Wilson, as long as it's some type of offensive player, I think you're happy. For me, I'm going to continue that trend for the Jets and in offensive line. Also, because the depth of this draft at receiver is very, is, is very good. And so I think the Jets either with their second first round pick or their early second round pick can address the receiver. Need. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree with that. And obviously going two linemen back to back is solid too. I just thought with the Mackay Becton, you know, I think he's going to be a solid, you know, a solid NFL lineman. So I think you go with the, the, the person to help Zach Wilson, because they don't really have like that true number one receiver over there. I know like the Elijah Moores are good and the Crowder last couple of years for them was good, but like, I know. I think you get that solid guy, uh, and, and you start connecting those two early. You know, it could work absolutely. So interesting enough, you know, I forgot about this. I had, my stupid page was down um, wrong on my screen. I had the Giants have five and seven, right? Um, any thought to go uh, offensive lineman with both picks because of how bad their offensive line's been, or do or would you go try to do get it? Another- it- as a Cowboys fan, do it. <laughs> Stop it, Please man. do it. It's so funny. Please, as, as a Cowboys fan, I'm begging the Giants to do it. And I don't care if they end up having one of the best offensive lines for the next 10 years, right? They're still going to screw up at quarterback. They will probably mess up Saquon Barkley's contract, and he'll probably be gone. 
They can't develop wide receivers, and their defense is at best mediocre. So go ahead and claim your stake as taking, you know, the top two offensive linemen in the draft and having a great offensive line, at least from the tackle perspective, for the next 10 years. Because I do not want to see the Giants take a Drake London or, or a Garrett Wilson or an Ahmad Sauce Gardner or one of these great defensive ends. Because I think that would hurt my Cowboys. What are they think? Uh, follow Nick Nina's advice, New York Giants. We're going to put this on Twitter a little bit later on. I hope we can get out to them. But yes, if, if the Giants do take two offensive linemen, um, listen, I think if you're Daniel Jones, you're super excited. And another interesting nugget here, uh, I believe it's five days after the draft, four or five days after the draft. So basically next week around this time, the Giants will have to make a decision on either picking up or declining Daniel Jones' fifth-year option, right? So they can either pick it up and he will be under contract for at least this next year, and they will continue to have his rights for that following offseason. And if they decline it, then Daniel Jones will be playing on a contract year, which basically says, we don't want your ass no more. <laughs> so uh, the, the Giants not only have a lot going on with this draft, but in the next four or five days afterwards, they're going to make have to make a lot of big decisions as far as their quarterback goes. Yeah, you know, I, I'm um, I'm kind of traumatized with the whole pay your quarterback thing recently, and we'll get into that later. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, I don't I don't feel too bad for Daniel Jones because I think my team's dealing with it a little worse. Uh, so, Jerry, this is where it gets interesting too because the next couple picks, uh, actually, next few picks, this is where our next question for this big draft goes: Where's the quarterback? Where's the first quarterback going? And so you have Carolina at number six, mm-hmm. you know. Obviously, hey, maybe the Giants say <laughs> we're going with a QB and they, they move off Daniel Jones and it's given away during the draft that by them picking at five or seven a QB, that's what they want to do, right? Um, you also have the Falcons who I disagree with you from the Texans. I think the Falcons have the worst roster in the NFL right now. I think they're the worst easily. Um, they busy member. You got to remember, no, their QB is Marcus Mariota, who's a backup, Okay. And um, who's the gambling wide receiver? Ridley. Ridley. Uh, is, Calvin, they Calvin have no Ridley. wide receiver. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they traded no away Julio Jones midseason. Calvin Ridley is suspended for the year. Good. Yeah. 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 But so you, you, you also. Yeah, you got a good argument. So here's the thing. And then you have the Seahawks at number nine. Two. Seahawks. They need a QB. You go with Drew Locke. Baker Mayfield. Jimmy Garoppolo. Right. Um, so, the, you know, these next few picks, realistically, from five to nine, we could see a quarterback. Jared, is that where you're saying a quarterback is going to go? Uh, you don't need to go through the teams and tell me who they're going to pick. Uh, but where does the, the next question is, where does the next, uh, where's the first quarterback go? Oh, 100%. The, 100%. Uh, the yeah. first quarterback is going to go number six and number seven overall. And, and listen, uh, we have already talked about, and I know that I have, this quarterback class is not what it was last year. There are no, in my opinion, elite prospects. I think there are developmental guys, maybe one or two guys that could step in day one if they had to be thrown into the fire and play. But I think the best scenario for every quarterback, at least top quarterback in this draft, would be to sit behind a, a another quarterback, right, and get to learn for a year and then take over the reins. Um, here, listen, if you're Carolina and you stay at six, you, how can you not take a quarter back? If you're, 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 you might have one of the hottest seats as far as the head coach goes going into next year. And so if you don't take a quarterback, like you're, you're, you're basically saying you're willing to, to roll out with Sam Darnold again and, or PJ Walker, who, you know, had a great career outside of the NFL, but is he really an NFL quarterback like long-term? And then Cam Newton, who you brought back, and, uh, uh, you know, the, that game against the Cardinals looked really well. And then it was like, okay, that's of course. he used up all of his gas and that one. Okay, so if, if I'm the Cardinal, or I'm sorry, if I'm the Carolina Panthers, unless I get blown away by an offer from another team, like in Atlanta, um, like a Pittsburgh who's sitting at 20, so that's a little farther away, you have to pick a quarterback. And I'm taking Malik Willis from Liberty, because in my opinion, he is the best quarterback in this draft. Maybe he is not equipped to play right away. Maybe a a, a Kenny Pickett, um, you know, or or um, who's the quarterback from Cincinnati? Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter, right? Maybe they are better equipped to start right away. But Malik Willis, without a doubt, is the most talented quarterback in this entire draft. And if if he's able to sit 
and he's in the right system, this dude can flourish. He's got all the measurables. You've seen the arm strength. If you haven't seen his pro day, go and watch it because the dude put on an absolute show, right? He seems like he's an awesome guy to be around. Seems like a leader. One of those types of guys that likes to galvanize the troops, all that stuff, right? So if I'm Carolina, like I said, unless you're trying to trade back and, and you find a you take Malik Willis and and you you run with that, right? And hopefully he can be your next franchise quarterback in the next 10, 15 years. Yeah, I know this is this is a I have a team that I think absolutely should pick a quarterback. I just don't know if they're gonna be able to. It's Seattle. I think Seattle should go and, and pick up a quarterback because they just you need to start that restart quicker. And also I kind of want them to be wrong, you know, and then just really <laughs> For a while, you know, similarly, obviously, Cardinals, it, it, it's, you know, there's been so many years, you know, of, uh, of, <laughs> of Russell stupid Wilson killing us in games. I can't do it anymore. Okay, so I don't, I want them, I really want Drew Locke to start, you know, uh, but it, it's just, it's not realistic, right? Um, you know, I have to agree with you, Malik Willis, for me, is the guy I go with as the number one pick, I, I, number one quarterback off the board. It's like, again, I think Seattle should pick, and I think they will pick a quarterback. I think the Falcons will go somewhere else um, and, 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 and um, not pick a QB. Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to agree. I'm going to have to agree. I think it's the Panthers at six. Or I'll say this. I think it's number six. Whoever, If the Panthers trade back, I think that's somebody trying to get a QB, essentially. So oh. number six yeah. number six will be the, the team, and it could be the Falcons. Right, it could be the Falcons moving up from eight to six, but then you're not giving up that much draft capital, right? Like, if they really want Malik Willis, because I do think he's the best guy. You know, a lot of people are talking about Kenny Pickett and his hands and all that stuff. And you know, Desmond Ritter, again, with a quarterback playing at Cincinnati, and you know, it's like you're playing Tulsa every year. It's like it's tough to, it's tough. So I, I do think it's Malik Willis or Pickett, but Malik Willis number one. And, and so I do think it's number six. And, and I do think the Panthers should do it because if Sam Darl ends up being your guy, whatever, right? I think he still could be, right? I, I, I'm not a Sam Darnold hater. He was great at USC. He's a local guy from Orange County, right? At San Clemente. My high school used to play him when I was in high school, um, aging myself there. And, um, you know, it's it, it just... It's one of those things where it's, I think the Panthers, you, you go one, two, they got PJ Walker, who's a good backup too. So if one of these guys just ends up, you know, not working out, right. You could still have that solid backup quarterback um, to help you out. If you are successful, one of the two quarterbacks, Malik Willis or Sam Darnold, it gets a little dirty and you have to trade somebody, but yeah, if I'm Sam Darnold, I am hating the fact they draft Malik Willis, but yeah, I do think it's the number six spot. And I do think the Panthers should be a quarterback. So yeah, number six, ends up picking a quarterback, the first quarterback off the board for sure. I mean, I'll I'll tell you this really quick. If you're moving up to number six, you better be taking a quarterback. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent at other positions. And whether it's a receiver, a corner, a defensive end, an offensive tackle, I think a lot of teams will be happy with a multitude of players that are left in that like six to 12, six to 15 range, right? I think you can get a, a, a first grade, probably hopefully starter, all pro, all that stuff. So if you're moving up to number six from any other spot, it has to be for quarterback. Because to me, I, I don't think the value is there to have to give up what you're going to give up. But Carolina is going to be asking for the farm because they are sitting at number six, unless it is another team that's within the top 10. But if they are in the teens and or further down, you're giving up a whole damn lot, and it better be for quarterback. Like, Pittsburgh, to me, is the ideal spot for Malik Willis. I'd Carolina would be asking for a King's Ransom from Pittsburgh in order to move all the way up. So I don't see that type of scenario. Yeah. Um, which is why I think Carolina stays where they are in picks, because I think they would just be asking for too much. So, yeah, if a team is moving up three, four, five, six spots for, like, a defensive end or a receiver, I think that's absolutely stupid because of the depth at those positions that we have in this draft. You know what I'm saying? Like it would Yeah, no, and that's a, that's the interesting thing about this draft is too. It's like why are teams going to trade too much because there's so much talent. Like if you want a corner, I still technically in my draft, which we're not doing, you know, physically, but like I still have Sauce Gardner. 
available at number six. So maybe a team, you know, a team that really, really needs a corner trades up for Sauce Gardner or Derek Stingley, who's been moving up a lot in this draft, right? A very, very popular player moving up a safe pick. So, you know, and then obviously if someone really, really likes a wide receiver, we saw with Jamar Chase going so early and, and essentially being one of the reasons you go to the Super Bowl, Super Bowl for the Bengals, you go with wide receiver. But yeah, I do agree. I, it, it, it wouldn't make much sense to, um, to not go quarterback, but I could see, you know, I could see, so like, I would love if the Cardinals traded up to number six and got sauce Gardner. Like I would absolutely love that. Or, you know, so it's going to be interesting though. That's why this draft is, is weird. And again, that's why we're not picking all the picks. Um, all right. Speaking of the Cardinals and, and your team, the Cowboys, that's, that's shown all over your hat um, uh, that, that you're wearing. Let's pick for our teams and then we'll move off the draft and we'll get into more of the NFL stuff. Um, Cardinals are 23. The- Cowboys are 24. Um, okay. fittingly. Yes, you go right? first. You go first. Right now. Yeah. Um, oh, man, this is – there's so much I want to talk about with the Cardinals that we haven't been able to talk about. And when we do our <laughs> our, our team reviews, too, it's just going to be – it's it's going to be me talking shit on my team essentially the whole time. But there's a lot the Cardinals, um, you know, need in this draft. And they didn't – I didn't think they did a good enough job in free agency – picking up certain positions they, they made, you know, they kind of let Chandler Jones go. Right. Um, it, it's, you're relying on JJ Watt, who's been injured for the last 15 years every year to be like your cornerstone guy on defense, realistically. Um, and you got rid of Christian Kirk who got, um, who ruined the wide receiver contract. Um, you know, we'll get into that in a second again, but goddamn damn. So you, yeah. Well, it, 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 so there's a lot the Cardinals go, and that's the thing. We're not going through the whole draft, so it's tough to see who's gone. Um, I do like a lot of corners in this draft. And so I think if the Cardinals can get a top four um, cornerback in this draft, uh, it, no, really top three, looking at, looking at the thing. If somehow, you know, a Derek Singley moves back to the teens and you can trade up, I think you go there, right? Um, I like Trent, Trent McDuffie. He's a Washington guy. The Cardinals are filled with Washington DBs. They're very, very successful. Uda Baker, Byron Murphy. I could absolutely see them picking a corner. Um, you do need an edge rusher. So again, if one of these edge rushers moves back, you got Jermaine Johnson. If Kayvon Thibodeau somehow moves back further, you could trade up. So the Cardinals could do a lot, a lot here. But I would, uh, you know, it, again, if you can't get a top corner, I think I go receiver. Wide receiver. Yeah. Because when you look at what could be on the Cardinals offense, it could be the Bengals, realistically. Um, You have DeAndre Hopkins, who's arguably the best wide receiver in the league. When he went down, the Cardinals kind of started to go down and and end up, you know, unfortunately getting blown out in the playoffs. Right. And and that's Kyler's guy. They re-sign A.J. Green. But, in the, you know, they have Rondell Moore from last year, but you still need that number two guy. And what you see with the Bengals, you have T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, and then you have Tyler Boyd. I could see this being similar. So I would, I would, I would go with wide receiver for the Cardinals because I think offense right now in the league is, is trending positively. And so I think you go wide receiver, and it just kind of depends on who falls to you. But I think most important for them is, is wide receiver in this draft. So I, I would go there, and I, I really think you could create a dynamic offense if you go with one of these star-studded wide receivers. God, I wish Drake London could fall to us, though. <laughs> I, it's not going to happen. You know? So I, uh, yeah, I, I go wide receiver. Um, so who do you have uh, with your Dallas Cowboys uh, at number 24? This is an interesting pick. I have no idea. <laughs> them. I mean, listen, b- both both Arizona and Dallas are at the mercy of the draft because they're picking so low. It's not yeah. like they're picking in the top five like we just went over to where they have pick of the litter in a sense, right? They can probably get the number one or number two player respectively at their positions. 23 and 24, a, a lot has happened already. And so the receiver market can be completely wiped and not completely wiped because the, the depth is there, but maybe there's not a first count first round talent wide receiver. So you have to go another position. Um, so for Dallas, I think their top two needs are offensive line and more specifically interior offensive line at guard and center. And then wide receiver at number two, since they, and I still can't believe I have to say this, <laughs> still traded away Amari Cooper. Like I'm still, I still wake for up no every reason. morning yeah, for no thinking reason. that it was a bad dream. 
Um, yeah. Not just because of what they got back, but just the fact that Amari Cooper is still in his prime. And if Dallas really wanted to, they could have restructured his contract and he can still be a member of this team right now. So I, I, I still, it still bugs me and I'm shaking still saying that one. So, um, you know, it depends on how the board falls. I would love for one of these stud receivers to fall. If a Chris Olave falls into the late teens, I'm trading up to get him. Because Chris Olave to me, is the smoothest route running receiver in this draft. He can take the top off of a defense, and I think he would pair so damn well with this Dallas receiving core when you have CeeDee Lamb, who can do a little bit of everything, Michael Gallup, who is more of the intermediate kind of jump ball receiver, and he's also coming off a torn ACL. You bring Chris Olave in to bring that, uh, take the top off a of defense, the guy that you have to be threatened about deep. He can also run every other route in the tree. Um, if, if Chris Olave is there at, 17, 18, 19, I know that the the Saints are in that realm and they could also use receivers. But if I'm Dallas, trade up to get Chris Olave. If for some reason he's not there, I'm I'm probably going for one of these guards. And it's either Zion Johnson out of Boston College or Kenyon Green out mm-hmm. of Texas A&M. Right, yeah. you have to show up that, that. Right now, the... the, the that was a big issue have. for them last... Yeah, that... The, it's it's a, I, I I agree with you on your picks. Um, it's going to be interesting too. I, sorry to interrupt, but like um, when you look at this, Probably. if you look at um, what's going to happen with twenty two Packers, Cardinals twenty three, <laughs> Cowboys twenty four, it's a uh, it's interesting, man. There, there's going to be like I think it's a battle of who can come up with a deal. I think one of the one of those three teams is going to have to trade up for a wide receiver. We're saying well, don't trade up the top six. But I think these there's going to be wide receivers traded all over the place um, because those these teams absolutely need guys. It's going to be interesting. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to see it. it it's going to be. And, and we haven't we've talked about this a little bit, like right, like the the Jets and the Giants both have two top ten picks. The Saints have two top fifteen to twenty picks, and so do the Eagles. And so I think both of those teams, the Eagles and the Saints, while they would both love to stay pat and take the best player available. If a team's willing to come up and give them another second round pick or another first round pick in next year's draft, like you have to do that. And so I think that the, the phones are going to be off the hook. And here's another thing about this receiver class, right? We've seen how crazy and how blockbuster this offseason has been. Tyreek Hill traded to the Miami Dolphins. Devontae Adams traded the Las Vegas Raiders, right? We've seen, like you talked about, Christian Kirk getting an absurd amount of money from the Jacksonville Jaguars, which completely started this whole wide receiver mess, right? And yeah, so I think a lot crazy. of teams are sitting here and saying, man, right? Like if it's a position of somewhat need, we got to take one of these first round wide receivers to get that fifth year option. We always talk about that with the quarterbacks. You're wanting to get that fifth year, that extra year of eligibility for a quarterback. The receiver market has blown up and the receivers are now like the face of the NFL. And so because it is such an an elite class, I think we're going to see a run on receivers once the first one is taken. Like whoever that whoever that first team is, whatever that first receiver that's taken, all of a sudden that clock is really going to start ticking for that position group. And I think we're going to see a huge run. And that is what I would most likely uh, believe that teams will be trading up for other than quarterback is receiver. No, it, it's going to be so. And then you even have the you have the Packers at twenty eight and the Chiefs twenty nine thirty. Like it, hey, it's, hey, it's, let, it's let, going to be. Let me, let, me, crazy. let me just say this. Let me just say this. Yeah. Let me say this. I hope that we can get together to watch this draft. Oh yeah. Green Bay Packers do not take a wide receiver in the first round with their twenty second and twenty eighth picks. Like thinking that they're going to if, if they do end up staying at then they don't do any trades up or down or irregardless. And the Green Bay Packers who just traded away. The best receiver in the NFL. Like, I don't think that's an argument in Devontae Adams. Aaron Rodgers, number one target for the last four or five years or however long it's been, right? And the Green Bay Packers have also not taken a first-round wide receiver in the last 20 years. If they do not do it this year with the talent that is there, it's going to burn itself down. Yeah, all those. Yeah, 22 and 28. You can stay there. You can package those picks and move up into the teens. You have so many opportunities to do so many things. And if they don't take a wide receiver, Packers fan, I'm selling my stuff. I, I'm no longer a fan of Green Bay. I, I can't do it. And Rodgers yeah, signed got- a massive, what, what was it, $150, 200000000 million deal, right? Like, he, he's now supposed to be a part of these 
negotiations and, and a part of building this franchise and all that stuff, you don't give him another weapon after losing Devontae Adams in his prime? Ooh. Oh, dude, I, I hope so bad that happens. I mean, then you also have Debo oh, Samuel and all this other crazy shit. Um, hey, give me give me a real quick, we'll move off the draft right now, but give me your most, uh, give me like an underrated player that you think will end up really, um, maybe getting drafted a little lower in the draft, but that will make a big impact and it's kind of just underrated for some reason. I, I, I'll go, well, here, I'll go first because mine is kind of crazy. Um, I have ba- uh, Bailey Zappi, the quarterback from, um, God, it's, it's Western Kentucky. He broke the record for most passing yards um, ever. Um, it, 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 uh, you know, you're going to get one of those late round, fifth, sixth round quarterbacks or something. Bailey Zappi is my guy. So super, super underrated. Um, that's who I'm going with. Uh, more close to the, the top ranks. I got George Karloftis. I think he's really, really good. But yeah, I'm going to go crazy with uh, Bailey Zappi. Give me another underrated player, Jared. Um, I'm sticking with receiver and though he still is underrated. He's, he's been starting to make some noise since his pro day. Sky Moore, the Western Michigan receiver. Yeah. He wears number two, number and the dude, I don't care where you line him up. He's more of a slot guy, kind of a gadget guy, but inside, outside, just get the ball in his hands. Let him be your kick returner. Let him be your punt returner. Let him do all the gadget plays on offense. Get the ball in this guy's hands. And I think he is going to be one of the steals of the draft. Now, a lot of people think that he's going to go in the second round. Maybe, maybe, maybe like the Chiefs or something like that would take him late in the first round, but more than likely a second round pick. And even though that is still a great place to be picked, it's not like you're a seventh round draft pick or undrafted or something like that. Um, I think that that will be one of the steals of the draft, whoever gets Sky Moore, receiver from Western Michigan. Very good, very good. All right, let's, uh, let's move to another wide receiver that is not underrated. He is one of the stars of the NFL. He played in the NFC Championship game. He was the star of the NFC Championship game, maybe besides uh, some of the Rams guys that ended up winning that game. Um, Debo Samuel. Jared, can you believe that we might Debo. get another absolutely five-star wide receiver traded in this offseason? Can you believe what's happening in San Francisco? Hey. Listen, man, I mean, can you blame Debo Samuel? Can you really? After the craziness that we've seen with this receiver market, with trades and contracts and signings and all that money going to these receivers, I can't blame the guy, right? Like, from from the reports, Debo Samuel wants to play wide receiver. Necessarily want to be doing all the running back type of things that Kyle Shanahan in this offense has basically, you know, transformed him into. Now, that doesn't mean that he wouldn't do it in a pinch or he wouldn't do it at all. But I think because he is somewhat of that hybrid, it is money as far as getting his next contract. Because even though the 49ers as an organization may think the world of him, because he is not purely a like number one X wide receiver right? Like, like a Jerry Rice or something like that, um, you know, or a Devontae Adams or a Tyreek Hill in this generation. I think that his, his next contract, as far as getting a max or something like that, would take somewhat of a hit because he does those other running back type things, because he yeah. does take a beating week in and week out. And we're not sure how long his body will be able to respond and, and you know, play at such an elite level. And so if I'm him, now that's not from also from other reports that's not the only reason why he has already requested a trade but i can't fault the guy right it it seems like they've had to have some type of negotiation and he has not liked what he has heard it's not like he's married to the organization yes i think he owes them a lot because they drafted him but debo sam debo samuel sees all this other money that's going out there at the receiver market he says i want a piece of that i'm next i got next who wants some of this so if you're the 49ers i think you 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 either any up, pay him like the other top receivers, like Tyreek Hill and like Devontae Adams, or you have to trade him. As simple as that. You pay him or you trade him. Now, I don't know if that trade would happen during the draft. It could happen afterwards after the dust settles, but it's one of two things happening. will be one of the top five receivers in the NFL, salary-wise, 
for the San Francisco 49ers, or he will be traded within the next few weeks. I don't it, think there's okay. any other way. Here's the thing about Debo, right? This is why this situation is so interesting because for me, I think you were saying a little bit of this too. Debo Samuel's value is so high because he was playing multiple positions and he was a starring role on a team a lot of people did not think would get anywhere close to the Super Bowl, let alone even maybe even the playoffs last year, right? A lot of people had the 49ers fourth, right? And then they end up in the NFC Championship game, you know, losing by, by, by less than 10 points, by single digits. Um, and that was because of Debo. So if he wants to get paid, like he, I think he wants to get paid, you got to do that, that same stuff. But what he's saying is he doesn't want to do that. He wants to just be a wide receiver. And, you know, arguably he was the second best wide receiver on his team behind George Kittle for a lot of years. George Kittle is obviously a tight end, but still it, it's, it, the, you know, the best pass catcher, the, the number one guy was George Kittle. So you're telling me you want to get paid like a number one guy when you, when you played that position, you weren't the number one guy. So it's an interesting situation, right? And, um, but is that his fault? No, it's not his fault. And, and, and here's the other thing. The 49ers, if you're the 49ers, I'll talk about 49ers, right? 49ers, what have they been doing in the last couple of years? They've been running the ball, smash mouth football. It, it, it's a brutal way to play. You know, they, they haven't needed a quarterback and, and, and all that stuff. And they've gotten to the Super Bowl and the NFC Championship now uh, doing this style. Jared, how many, like when you look back on like fantasy football, how many running backs turned into like the number one guy in fantasy football from the 49ers? A lot, right? So maybe Debo Samuel just kind of fit into that role. And the 49ers are probably like, whatever, bro. If you don't want to do that and you don't want to play for us anymore, we'll go have Elijah Mitchell run for 250 yards against Packers again to get to the Super Bowl. We'll sign some random running back sign the offensive line. And so I think if you're the 49ers, yeah, I agree. You just trade him. You go, dude, get out of here. Um, we'll trade you in the draft and we'll get one of these star study receivers that, that that's, that's supposed to come out of this draft. And you got all this choice. I think if you're the 49ers, it's the best year ever. You could have a guy kind of be a crybaby about his positioning. And, and it's just, it's going to be interesting. I think this is a bad move by Tebow. Like, I don't think this is the smartest thing he could do. Yeah. He could end up being like traded to the green Bay Packers. Right. And then he's playing with Aaron Rodgers and his stock goes up and he gets paid a lot. But I don't know. For me, it's a little confusing how he wants to get paid compared to like what he did last year. He doesn't want to do that anymore. So how do you get paid? And if you're 49ers, I think who cares? Just get rid of him. Get rid of him. Uh, draft another wide receiver, draft a running back, draft Reese Hall, whatever you need to do. Go do that. No, you make a great point from the 49ers perspective because their recipe yeah. is somewhat plug and play. Now, obviously, you need to have good players, and they do with their offensive line and with George Kittle and uh, Elijah Mitchell, right, who they got uh, later in the draft last year. But if I'm Kyle Shanahan, I'm basically saying, all right, man, like you've seen what this offense can do for you. Now, if you don't want to be a part of that anymore, I'm going to go find another fourth or fifth round running back, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to keep rolling. So you're right. From from the 49ers' perspective, I think they do have to trade him because I think that bridge has been burned, and I – and from the words of Debo Samuel's mouth, he does not want to be there anymore, right? He yeah, doesn't even want sure. the 49ers to present to him a contract offer. He is like, I'm done. I'm, I'm out of the Bay Area. Uh, trade me. So if you're the 49ers, obviously you're not just going to jump at that and trade him to the first bidder, right? You're going to do your due diligence. And I think that's why this has taken a little while now. But I think that during the draft, they will try to trade him and see what they can get for it. See if they can get a first round pick and then get another receiver or something like that. And or he gets traded right after the draft. And then they get a first-round pick for next year, maybe get a, a player back or two, something like that. So either way, I think Debo Samuel, we've seen the last of him in a 49ers uniform. The question is, how fast do the 49ers want to move on this? Do they want to get draft yeah. picks and compensation for this year's draft? Or are they okay with not doing that and waiting until afterwards for, you know, thing for, for return uh, from next year? And then, well, that's what I'm saying. I think with this wide receiver market, um, with a lot of these teams, we think might draft wide receivers that have multiple picks, Chiefs, you know, Packers, you know, maybe even the Cardinals, right? Um, I think this, you got to do it during the draft. 
like just whatever. The guys at the club, you know, saying no, I don't want to play with the team and all. Like just get rid of it. Like enough with that. You know what I'm saying? This is you, you, this team has been very very successful with like a roster that like offensively doesn't make a lot of sense sometimes. Still got Brandon Ayuk, still got George Kittle. You throw another rookie in there that that you draft, you know, from from the picks that you trade for Debo Samuel. I think they'll be fine. And like I said, you had Jamichael Hasty running for like a hundred yards last year. Jeff Wilson Jr. Like, who the hell are these guys? They don't need Debo Samuel. Yes, he did get them far, but you know, it's a little, it's a new leash in 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 San Francisco. They got Trey Lance potentially playing next year. Yeah, you know, just start over, right? You don't need to go through that. Um, where do you think he goes if he gets traded? What's uh, uh, I saw um, I saw uh, Field Yates Twitter uh, post yeah. literally like I think it was within an hour of Debo Samuel saying he wanted to be traded. And he's like, I've got a list of NFL teams that should want to trade for Debo Samuel. 32. And it was <laughs> every other team. It was all 31 other teams. Like there, there is no wrong answer for Debo. Debo is that great that every single team should at least inquire about what it would take to trade for him. Now, I think if I'm the 49ers, I am literally asking for the farm. You have a comp a sense to what the Tyree Kill trade was, to what the uh, Devontae Adams trade is. So I think that is, you know, the bar, or that is at least a starting point. He is, at what, like 23, 24, so younger than Devontae Adams and Tyree Kill, looking for his <laughs> first major payday. Um, yeah, I, I think every single team in the league should be inquiring and, and saying, what do we got to do? Now, if I'm the 49ers, I would prefer to trade him to an AFC team so that I don't have to see him very often. And there ain't no way in hell I'm trading him within the division. So if you're the Cardinals or the Seahawks or the Rams, no box. He ain't staying in the division. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say any of the AFC teams have a realistic chance at trading for Debo. Yeah, no, it, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be so interesting to see what happens to Debo if they do in fact it's a fractured relationship and he, and he doesn't want to play for them anymore. Because you're right, even like yeah, obviously 31 teams, all that stuff could get him, but like there's so many teams that actually kind of need a guy like that too. So it, it's it's gonna be interesting. Um, what was it? Yeah, the, okay, I'll I'll give you one team. Now this won't happen because it's in division. If he goes to the Rams. Just give him no, the title. That, no, just get, no, just get no, the me, like. No, Jared, no, we just uh-uh. might as well not watch football next year if he ends up on the Rams. Like that's you know. Oh. On the and veto that trade, just like the NBA did. David Stern <laughs> vetoed the trade back in the day when the Lakers tried to get Chris Paul. Right, but you yeah. veto that. That is not allowed. Right, there, there needs to be parity in the league, and there is no way in hell that the Rams, the defending Super Bowl champions are about to trade for one of the best receiver, running back, hybrid, whatever the hell you want to call them, dudes, and all the NFL. Should not happen. Also, I don't know where the Rams are getting all this money. Just re-sign Matthew Stafford. Right? Yeah. They are uh, Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup. Both those dudes are going to want more money, right? You you have Jalen Ramsey on a $100 million contract. Like, ha- what? there is a salary cap for a reason. And I scratch my head at this because as a Dallas Cowboys fan, they are the most frugal in all of the NFL, even though they are worth the most money uh, in all of sports, right, uh, around the world, around the globe. Um, but yet, somehow, my dad, Dallas Cowboys didn't seem to, to fork out money, and you got the L.A. Rams over here just handing out money like it's candy. So, you know, from a money perspective, I'm sure the Rams can make it work, but no way. Roger Goodell, you veto that. You cannot let that happen. Well, I'm just under the assumption that um... – the Rams don't have a salary cap like every other team. I just think that they're allowed to sign anybody they want, and it's because it's L.A. and uh, you know, they, right? I know, I know. They got to have that L.A. team popular, right? You got the Chargers though. You got the Chargers are good too. Um, Dark Horse. Okay. Uh, side note. This did one, you this see one, what? Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Did you see the Rams like movie trailer for the draft? No, I haven't seen it yet. I think I know what you're talking about, though. I, I liked it. Uh, I like. I'm gonna go look at it later. It, go on YouTube, and the the Rams literally did a a legitimate movie trailer for the draft. Now the Rams don't have their first pick is in the third round. So the, you know, day one on Thursday and the early part of Friday, the Rams are going to be irrelevant unless they trade up, which they don't have that much 
draft capital to trade up. So the Rams are going to be kind of sitting with their feet up, watching the draft go by until the third round. Jared, they don't so need the draft. They're like, oh, they have the salary cap not, at will. Why not make a movie? But yeah, if you haven't seen it, go on YouTube, check it out. It's really cool. Um, I've never seen another team in sports do that. We've seen teams, you know, uh, their, their social media teams do funny little clips and videos. But this is a legitimate, like, two, three minute movie clip. Like, yeah, it is cool. Again, for a team that um, is not going to draft for a while, um, I won't draft realistically, what, until Friday? Maybe even Saturday? Yeah, no, you yeah, know? Friday. Friday. They're, they're, they're in the third round. But they again, don't Jared, they don't, have to draft. they don't have to draft because they're handed money by Roger Goodell themselves to sign people. So it doesn't matter, right? Apparently. Uh, and it's not like the fans, there's no Rams fans anyway, so it's not like people can actually watch the draft. You know, in Los Angeles, you're going to watch the Chargers. You know, there's more Chargers fans than Rams fans, I, I truly believe. Um, all right. Uh, we're, we're kind of running out of time to talk about Kyler, so we'll get to that another time, guys. I mean, we'll, we'll, this is obviously... Uh, I, I see. I see. He's trying, to, he's, trying to, he's trying to dodge. He's trying to dodge the Kyler question. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here's the thing, though. All right. That's fine. If we get together on draft day, um, maybe we could do like a little live stream or something like that. Uh, uh, when the Cardinals pick comes up, because the Cardinals and Cowboys go back to back, so if they're still back to back, maybe we can live stream those two picks, and then uh, and talk about Kyler and, and all that stuff. So I'm I'm gonna hold but, you to that. I'm gonna hold you to that because I was looking forward to hearing what you had to say, and now I gotta wait another extra couple see, days. Yeah, so we gonna live stream. So, hey, I, you guys haven't heard from us in like what a, a month and a half, two months, and I'm still not talking about Kyler. So we'll uh, we'll get to that in a second. But so Jared, we'll. we'll We'll, we'll, we'll turn topics just to end the podcast. Give like five, 10 minutes. You know, the NBA playoffs are going on. And normally we probably wouldn't talk about like the first round of the playoffs and we wait to get these big time matchups and see who's in the conference finals. But we had kind of not a major upset because they were, you know, they, they were seated so lower, but the, the Brooklyn Nets getting swept was very, very shocking. And what was more shocking is just that, that, that you know, Ben Simmons, who they traded um, James, James Harden for and, and, and you know, a couple other guys, um, did not end up playing in the series. And, and now it's coming out that Ben Simmons mentally is still not there and that he, he – this is so – and you know, I don't want to make fun of like a mental illness here, but like he's saying that he mentally can't get on the court so his back hurts. I don't know a doctor that has, has ever diagnosed anything like that. You know, it sounds like Jada Pinkett Smith and her alopecia self-diagnosing stuff, right? We have we haven't talked about Will Smith either on this podcast, but it mm. sounds a little sexy. Mm. Like I'll give you first shot here because I hate that guy now. But <laughs> go ahead, give me your thought on Ben Simmons and the Nets. Uh, just a disaster, not even winning a single playoff game uh, this year. I'm going to preface my comments by saying yeah. this. Mental illness is a real thing. It's something that needs to be taken seriously. Yep. When someone says that they are dealing with a mental illness, um, you know, obviously we are not with him every single day. The spotlight is not uh, on him because he has not been on the court. And so realistically, we don't have a lot of information as to, as to what he is really going through on a day in and day out basis mentally. In saying that, literally not played a minute of that was one year. You and I have played the same amount of minutes on an NBA court as Ben Simmons has in the last year. That would be zero. Right? Harden who at this point, that trade is a complete steal because at least James Harden is on the court. He may not be what he was in Houston and his earlier days in Oklahoma City, but James Harden is at least contributing while Ben Simmons is over here in the brightest of all uh, you know, suits and clothes, sitting on the bench, looking like he's chilling, enjoying his, his you know, salary, which he's still getting paid. Still getting paid. But he is not earning his money. 
has not earned his money in over a year since the collapse of the playoffs last year when he was completely embarrassed. And I think that is still weighing on him. And like I said, mental illness is huge, and that may be something that he has not mentally gotten over yet. Okay. All right, we get that. But from a physical standpoint, you're back. Bro, you haven't played basketball in a year. You've had a year yeah. to get yourself ready, right? A, an entire year. We saw Tiger Woods get in a car accident, almost lose his leg. Rehab. He just played in the Masters a couple weeks ago. Yep. That's called competitive drive. Has zero competitive drive. The dude doesn't want to play. He doesn't want to play, right? We heard for the last week or so, the rumors were, as long as everything goes well, Ben Simmons is going to suit up for game four. Game four ended up being a potential elimination game for the Nets, right? Yeah. If Ben Simmons had any dog in him whatsoever, he would have suited up and tried to go out there and fight and go to battle for his boys. Now, maybe he doesn't have the relationships because with, with the rest of the players like Kevin Garnett, or I'm sorry, uh, Kevin Durant. And Kyrie Irving, because he just got there and he's only been there for a few months. But you're telling me that in a game for win or go home, you get out there and give your team 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You can't even go out in warm-ups and try to see how your back feels? Kevin, Dur- uh, Kevin Durant. If I'm Kyrie Irving, if I'm Steve Nash, if I am anyone that has any type of say in the Nets organization, Ben Simmons is gone. I don't want him. I simply don't want him. The dude does not even want to try to get out on the court. Now, yes, he's practicing in some form and capacity, right? I guess he did a little bit of like three-on-three, four-on-four pickup, something like that. But like an elimination game in the playoffs. You don't even have to go out there and shoot. You have two of the best offensive players in the world on your team. You are out there for defensive purposes, get rebounds, push the fast break, dish the ball like Magic Johnson, which we all know you can do. And you can't even attempt to get out there and try to help your team? No, nah, man. Yeah. Ben Simmons, if, if, if I have any say in that organization, Ben Simmons is gone. I, I don't want. I don't care that you just traded for him. I don't care if he is owed twenty million dollars and he gets that twenty million dollars. Ben Simmons is gone. I do not want that type of player in my locker room, contaminating my locker room with that type of complacency, because there are a lot of other dudes in the league that play injured or hurt. Right? It's the end of the year. It's the playoffs. Everyone is playing banged up, and I'm not saying that Ben Simmons did not have a serious back injury or was not dealing with something serious. But you haven't played in a year, bro. You were in the NBA. You have made millions of dollars. You should be working with the best medical staff in the entire world that your money can buy. And you're telling me that in a year, you can't get, you can't suit up and play? I, 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 bye. I, Jared, I've never, I I don't want to hear from from him. Yeah, I've never seen this before. Like, I, I love what you just did because you destroyed the guy and that's what he deserves. And again, we're not making fun of mental illness here, but like say that be at home. Don't be on the sideline. Like it doesn't add up. Like that's what I'm saying. You, you kind of, you got You can't have it both ways. You can't be sitting there telling people you're going to play. You can't be there on the sideline watching the games and then be like cheering for your team. And they'd be like, Oh, but I can't be out there though. That doesn't make any sense. If you're, if you're able to be in the arena, you can play. Okay. So it's, it's interesting for him, you know, two things. One, you said something, Jared, you said a lot there, but like you, you mentioned something that the company, you said he has no dog in him. Um, Jared, he, he does have dog in him. He has female dog in him. Uh, first of all, and, and number two, I think Ooh. with Ben Simmons, he, uh, the NBA needs to think about the, uh, having these contracts not be um, all guaranteed, okay? This ain't oh. a John Wall oh. situation where John Wall's just been hurt for years and legitimately injured. You know, I think too many guys have too much power here in the NBA, and they do need to think about maybe 
talking about guaranteed contracts not happening fully guaranteed because pe- teams are getting screwed over this playoff left and right from these guys. Really, Benson- really quick, really quick, because yeah. I, I want you to finish. I'm so glad you brought that up because Stephen A. Smith on ESPN's first take has been saying this for months. And, he, and I, didn't, I, I haven't even watched that either. I'm he reiterated this- He reiterated it either yesterday or the day before. He said when the NBA's current CBA, collective bargaining agreement, expires and the NBA and the Players Association have to come together, he said the number one thing that the owners are coming for are these players' money because these players want to take days off. They don't mm-hmm. want to play 82 games. Damn right. right? They're, 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 they're saying the faking injuries to get traded a la uh, – uh, Wow, I'm, I'm blanking on his name now. Multiple guys. Uh, it's multiple, multiple guys, right? Like, um, James so, Harden. You know, the, the, <laughs> the new collective bargaining agreement, the owners are going to put the hammer down. Like, the players yeah. better get ready. The, the players, I, I I'm, hope usually, have- I'm usually down for the, the contracts, but it's the, it, it, for the NBA, it's the exact opposite as the NFL. The NFL, these guys' lives are, are, are being, you know, parts of their lives are being taken away from how physical this game is. Right, those guys, and for years they did. They weren't getting guaranteed contracts at all. The NBA is essentially the most protected sports league in the world. I mean, there's there's barely any contact anymore, and the stars are running the league. So yeah, it is different. I'm normally for people getting paid their money, but these guys t- are taking these these bags a little too seriously. Now they're they're taking themselves a little too seriously. Um, so yeah, I absolutely. Uh, that's I'm glad, and I had no idea anybody else had been talking about this. I thought I was going to be bombshell city here with my uh, don't pay the guys uh, thing, but yeah, no, it's it's interesting. Ben Simmons. I'll move on and finish the podcast here um, for the Nets themselves. Yeah, you need to figure out what to do with Simmons, and I think you need to get rid of Kyrie too. And again, you just start over. Kevin Durant himself would. Ju- I mean, I don't even know who you'd go grab, but it's just. For me, with the whole unvaccinated stuff last year, you don't know if that's going to still be around. And, you know, it's it just, you're not going to do Durant and Ben Simmons, right? And Durant and Kyrie doesn't work. So just start over. Durant's essentially a part owner of the team at this point, right? We've kind of been hearing that. He wants Steve Nash to stick around. So if you're not going to get rid of Steve Nash, what's the next guy in line to essentially get rid of? It's, it's Kyrie, right? Because you have to get rid of Simmons. He's a, he's a POS, you know what I'm saying? He's just, he's not a team guy, right? And he wasn't even on your team all year. I think you got to get rid of Kyrie. And then that's just, you start over with Durant. He's been an NBA champion before. Figure out who to get for him. Make the roster a little bit better. Get rid of some of those old, like, former all-stars like Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge and all those guys that don't matter anymore. Um, and, you know, go with the Seth Currys, with the Bruce Browns, the, you know, um, the Nicholas Claxtons, right? Really like that guy. Um, you can stick with Andrew Gentleman if you want, but he's kind of a a nobody too. Um, yeah, just get rid of like the the, the get rid of like the NBA 2K13 roster at this point, <laughs> right? Get rid of those guys. Like uh, go with uh, go with Durant and the young guys and, and, and get another star and go mano and mano. That's what I think they should do. It's it's you're you're not wrong. Kyrie Irving is going anywhere because you are right in the fact that Kevin Durant is part owner of the team. And the Nets are not doing anything without Kevin Durant's say, right? I, I think Kevin Durant does want to see Steve Nash return. And I think he does want he want about the relationship off the court. But I think on the court, Kevin Durant understands what Kyrie Irving is. He is box office. On the court, Kyrie Irving is worth 40 to $50 million a year. And now, I don't think the Nets will give him another long-term contract because of his fluidity as far as being available and not available yeah. because you never know or like the guy could just not feel good one day or think sure. the earth has gotten flatter and just take a day off you, you, we don't know yeah he lost really gravity don't. can't walk on the ground anymore yeah yeah of course and so i think from that perspective i i don't see a team that would be willing to give him a long long-term contract but to me i just i still don't understand i get how great boston was playing uh you know and, and, and the great players that they have and the coaching staff and all that but think about this. Kevin Durant just got swept. Round it is. I don't care who they're playing. That's a good point. Yeah. 
the best player in the entire world, not just in the NBA, not just in America, the entire world. To me, if I'm either players or for that matter, like I'm, I'm not taking vacation this year, or maybe you do, like maybe you take one right away, but it's about business this offseason. Y'all got embarrassed player in the world and Kyrie Irving who is considered one of the best players in the world like they got swept um really quickly too I just pulled up Ben Simmons outfit and I think I don't know if it was from game four because I don't think he was on the sideline for game four it was for game three dudes out here like looking like played the entire year he's wearing a full jacket oh god I hate him so much yeah. With like some some blue like a blue stripe down the middle that that turns blue into the whole sleeve. He's got orange pants on. He's got a big old chain on. You know that was worth some money. Yeah, and sure. And then I can't get a real close up on the shirt, but over here looking like number one, he's deserved all that money that he's gotten, and number two, like it's no big deal that I haven't played all year, whether it was with the Sixers or with the Nets. I'm going to show up on the sideline trying to look like the best dressed, best dressed, trying to look like, you know, Joe Cool. I, I, I'm, I'm done with this dude. I'm done with him. Like I said, I, I can't say it enough on this podcast. It might get a little redundant. I don't understand where I'm coming from. I'm done with Ben Simmons. That's all yeah, I can say. Oh, about that. I'm done with it too. Like, unless he comes out as an all star next year. Like, he's he's absolute bust and one of the worst in NBA history, realistically. I know he's been an all-star, but, like, what he's done to his career, I don't know. Yeah, guys got to, like, hopefully the Kardashians don't get to him again because then it's, then it's really over, right? I think Kendall and Devin Booker, you know, she passed on the, uh, the injury bug to Devin Booker, clearly. But, like, uh, you know, it's just, yeah, I'm done. I'm done with Ben Simmons, too. Um, but the Nets, I'm not done with. I still like the the fact that the the I like Tevin Durant. I still think he's top five player. Um, but yeah, and I disagree with one thing. I, I I do think that if you're a New York team or an LA team, um, specifically this year that did not make the playoffs, I think it's a requirement for them to all have a roundtable discussion in Cancun uh, at one of those <laughs> hotels. You're gonna have Paul George there, Kawhi Leonard, uh, LeBron, AD, West Russ Westbrook's gonna be there twice probably for what he did to the, to the Lakers. Uh, and then you got KD, Kyrie, you know, it's Mexico. I think they, you can be unvaccinated there. Maybe he's not invited. I don't know. But uh, yeah, and you got New York Knicks. Maybe you could have Julius Randle and RJ Barrett come down and it could be a real cool, uh, real interesting and cool um, setting there in Cancun. So I disagree with that. I think they all should go down to Cancun, figure mm-hmm. out how to all join forces together, and maybe we'll see LeBron in Brooklyn next year. I mean, like Le- I LeBron know. came out. LeBron's been, like, live-tweeting half these playoff games. He came out a couple days ago and, and said, I'm not quoting verbatim, but he basically said, like, this is, you know, this is the last year that I'm missing the playoffs. We're coming back in. It's like, that's cool, man. You're sitting on Twitter right now where you're sitting on your couch. Like, no, no one really cares about you right now, LeBron. And yeah. this is coming from a, a diehard Lakers fan. I, I don't want to hear talk anymore. I just want to see these guys play, be available, number one, and produce. That's it. I agree. I don't think that's too I much agree. Jared, Jared, fun podcast as always. Um, obviously, we've got back. NFL draft back. coming up. we got so much still to discuss just from the whole NFL offseason. And we'll be back next week. We'll, we'll, we'll have discussion topics. Um, follow us on social media this weekend. I may or may not be able to use my phone during the NFL draft. I'll update you guys on that situation um, realistically, but we'll be following. I, I know, Jared, I'll let you take over the uh, the uh, Instagram and the Twitter accounts to, to, to be talking about the draft and all that stuff, and if we do get a Debo Samuel trade. Um, and, Jared, we'll release to our our mock draft. We'll try to do some mock draft. We'll release that tomorrow Yeah, we'll get um, some before, out. obviously, the draft starts. But I, I, we have no confidence in our picks actually ending up being – uh, available. I, I will. Th- I'll tell you this. I will throw one trade in there. I'll throw a trade in there. That that's that's what I'll tell you. I'll do. I'll, I'll okay, have one yeah, trade. I'll, I'll do one too. I'll yeah. do one too. You guys will probably like it. Uh, but yeah, that's for this podcast. Uh, we're finished. We'll see you next week. Uh, I am Nikki Matt. Jared Smith. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the NFL draft.